Hi y'all and welcome to the third installment of Art Zone Phones It In. I'm Nancy Guppy here in my Queen Anne condo. This is our set decoration, the beautiful fruit basket here. Uh, joining me of course on iPhone camera and my trusty sidekick, Mr. Joe Guppy. Say hello Joe. Hello, hi. That's his hand. Um, okay, so Art Zone Phones It In uh, came about because of COVID-19. Uh, the regular production of Art Zone has been suspended, of course, but we did not want the virus to stop us from bringing art and culture to you. So we've scaled everything down to this teeny tiny show. Now, Joe and I are having fun doing this. Um, that said, I don't think, and Joe, you have to back me up on this. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever spent this much uninterrupted time together. Before. I don't think so. Yeah, right. right? Which is why I want to share some very positive news with you. Come, come around over here and make sure you get a good look at this. Um, so it says, days without fighting. Five. We've gone five days in a row without fighting. I feel very proud of that. Joseph? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah you too? Rocking it. Now, <laughs> of course, uh, we're hoping to hit double digits, but you know what? Fingers crossed, one day at a time. I don't want to jinx it. Uh, anyway, we've got a really uh, great show for you. Uh, uh, chef and cookbook author Becky Selengut is going to share some snack ideas. Singer-songwriter Tomo Nakayama, great artist, is going to perform a song. Uh, I've got some suggestions on how to engage with art from your home. And we're going to kick it off with the mega-talented Christine Reapy. Okay, so Christine is an actor. Um, she's been on many local and regional stages. Uh, she's an improviser, a great improviser. She's part of the company of Unexpected Productions, which is down in Pike Place Market. And Christine is a composer, and she has used this uh, uh, social distancing time to write a brand new musical, a very timely new musical that uh, she's gonna share with us. It's kind of a world premiere. Uh, so uh, take it away, Christine. Hi Nancy, Christine Reapy here, and I'm so excited to be on your show today to debut the first song from the musical I'm writing, uh, The Quarantine Cycle. And this song, I imagine, will be probably the Act 4 finale. And when we do it on Broadway, we'll have a big orchestra, and we'll have lights, and we'll have costumes and dancers, and I'll be in a giant sequin gown, and it'll be stunning. Uh, but for today, for the world premiere, it's just me and my wall. So everyone, please enjoy a touching song. A single spotlight. I appear. I'm sitting here at home, quarantined alone, socially distanced from my family, friends, and foes. Now normally I'd love this, spending all day here on my tukus. Just me, my two dogs, and our favorite TV shows. But I can't help but thinking about the things I want to do, the things I took for granted, and maybe you did too. The first thing I plan to do, the thing for me that's number one, when this is over and we've won, and our COVID-19 nightmare is done. Oh, that's when I'll touch my face again. I miss running my fingers up and down my cheek, tracing how my lips move when I start to speak. I had no idea my hand spent so much time up in this place, and now the only thing I want to do is touch my face. Oh, I can't wait to go outside again, or go to a park and use a slide again. My anxiety will drop from 12 to 9 again, and I can't wait to touch my face again. I can't recall if my nose curves up or down, or how my chin feels scrunchy when I frown. I miss counting the hairs all along my brow. Oh, what am I supposed to do with these things now? Oh, I can't wait for schools to open their doors again. I'll stock up on toilet paper like before again. Eat out at a restaurant or three or four again. And I can't wait to touch my face again. It's like the world is spinning crazy, but also standing still. I find myself thinking of all the people who are ill, but I know that we'll get through this and we'll come out stronger too. And you know what I know, what I'm gonna wanna do. Everybody, just me. We'll all get to go outside again. 
like Sondheim wrote, side by side by side again. We'll go to the theater bar and gym and beach again. We'll get mani pedied waxed and bleached again. We'll hug and be grateful for family and friends. And soon I'll touch my face again. Oh. Oh man, that is a surefire hit. Well, Christine has a number of projects that are on hold right now because of COVID-19, but you can keep current with her performance schedule on Facebook and on Instagram. With most of us eating at home 99.9% .9 of the time these days, um, it's easy to get into a food rut. I think it is. Uh, so we've come up with a segment. We're calling it Snacks for Shut-Ins. And uh, it's tips and advice from professional foodies like chef, educator, and cookbook author, Ms. Becky Selengut. Well, Becky Selengut, great to see you. Hi, Nancy Guppy. How you doing? Oh, you know, living oh, the life, living the COVID life. It's pretty kooky. It's pretty kooky. <laughs> it's totally kooky. <laughs> so uh, you are um, uh, our first uh, Snacks for Shut-Ins guest. It's a great and, time. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you got to share with us. So kind of the love of my life is um, my dad and I used to watch uh, New York Islanders hockey games together when I was a kid. And he would have me make his special, his special dip, which was sour cream and Tabasco. And then a bunch of stuff that no kid wants to touch, like canned watery clams and Worcestershire sauce and onion powder and a whole bunch of stuff. So I cut out all of that. And I go just for the Tabasco and sour cream and um, serve it with uh, Frito scoop, like the scoop, big scoop. So what's the percentage of sour cream to Tabasco? Well, it should be lightly pink. <laughs> so <laughs> like it should just have that slightly lurid color that yeah. dis is disturbing. And that's about right. Oh, and there's the dippers. You yeah, there's dippers. Take pick a little bite and tell me what you think. If this is a good batch, delish. It's like my best work as a chef, really. <laughs> your dad, your dad would be so happy right now. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this photo to him later today. I'm gonna have another one, even though you told me not to. Oh no, I think you go for it. No, there's no rules at this point in in time. Anything goes, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's the the dip, sour cream, Tabasco. What what's next? My wife April and I sort of came to this together, where we would we would have popcorn while we watch TV at night. Um, and then we started putting like, you know, a little olive oil instead of butter because we thought yeah. that was a healthier thing. So we would put olive oil on, uh, on our popcorn and then um, we put, you know, just salt and that was it for a while. And then we're like, oh, come, we can do better. So then we started putting truffle salt on our popcorn and then we're like, that's seriously good. Oh. So then it was like olive oil and truffle salt. And then I have a huge apparently obsession with Tabasco. So especially green Tabasco. So ah. um we grabbed uh, green Tabasco and we put that with the truffle salt, which sounds weird in your ear, but just trust me, it's super good because it brings a, just a mild heat and a little bit of acidity to it. And then at the end of the day, you get this really- There it um, is. All right. Did you want to, yeah. Delicious. So, good. so the, the Tabasco, the wetness of it doesn't make the, the popcorn kind of get melty. No, you just uh, drizzle the drops around and then just uh, toss it in the bowl together. Yeah. And- Every once in a while you get a piece of popcorn that has a little bit of a, a tiny bit of a wet spot on it, but it's delicious. So it doesn't ruin like the crunchiness of it, but it's, um, I don't know, it's so good. Yeah, wet delicious, not wet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not soggy. It doesn't make the whole thing soggy. Right. Yeah. What am I gonna do with all this snack food, Nancy? Snack food. I think you're gonna have a little party with yourself. Uh-huh. I mean, this is like the COVID-19, we are gaining this right now. <laughs> That's right, the COVID-19. Well, hey, man, thank you so much, uh, Becky. Really great to see you. Great, great suggestions. And um, I look forward to seeing you actually in person. That would be great. Soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Becky's latest book, How to Taste, is available from indie bookstores and online. Uh, you can learn more about the pantry in Ballard where she teaches and check out Becky's educational videos on her YouTube channel. All right, next up is a... What's this? Just read it. Becky's Snacks for Shut-Ins inspired Joe to put together a video for a brand new snack item that he hopes will catch on. Take a look. What? It's the new snack sensation. 
Everybody loves crackers. Everybody loves cheese. Put them together. Put them in the oven and put them in your mouth. It's Caracho's. So good, you'll forget to chew. Caracho's. But don't forget to chew. Caracho's. Caracho's. Crachos are just cheese and crackers. Melted, you know, like nachos. Yeah, I know, but it's not an actual product, right? Not yet. Well, where did you get that logo? My branding team. What? I'll, I'll tell you all about it later. What? Just what? do the music. Toss to the music. Okay. We have some really great music for you. A wonderful musician, Tomo Nakayama. Um, he's a singer-songwriter. Uh, he's been playing music in Seattle for 20 years, put out lots of records as a solo artist and with his band, Grand Hallway. I think you're gonna like this song. Enjoy. Hey Nancy, this is Tomo, um, and this is Mochi. And uh, we are in uh, my home studio in West Seattle. Hope you're staying safe and healthy and wanting to sing a song today for my parents. Um, who live in Bellevue, um, but I haven't been able to see them for a while. So um, this is a song called Hirakamura, uh, and it's about uh, the small mountain mountain village in Japan where I was born. And yeah, um, hope to see everybody again soon.
Thank you. Take care, everybody. Stay healthy. Hitakumara is available on Tomo's Bandcamp page. His newest release, Melon Day, is an all-electronic dance album available digitally from Amazon, iTunes, etc., and on vinyl from Porchlight Records. And you can keep up with Tomo's creative world on Facebook and on his website, tomonakiyama.com. We've got a few ideas of how you can uh, engage with art and experience art from your home, and we're going to start with poetry. Now, Shin E. Pai is a well-respected local poet, described by the Seattle Review of Books as one of the most thoughtful poets in the Northwest. Very high praise, very deserved. And she has a new book of poetry titled Enso. Now, Shin Yi's mid-April book launch has been rescheduled for June 18th at Hugo House, so you want to mark your calendar for that. In the meantime, Enso is available from Seattle-based publisher Entre Rio Books, and more about Shin Yi is on her website, shinyipai.com. All right, if you want to learn how to play an instrument or get better at the instrument you already play, you want to check out The Music Factory. This place was founded in 2008 by musician and smart business guy Ari Joshua in Madison Valley, and the school has moved its curriculum completely online. All ages and all skill levels are welcome. Pretty much all instruments are taught, and the entire teaching staff of, I think, about 20 are working artists, and that's a really important point. So more information about the Music Factory is at musicfactorynw.com. Finally, if you're stuck at home and you have the urge to take up drawing or painting, you might find inspiration from my friend Alex Landis, who is a self-taught painter. Uh, during this time of quarantine, Alex has looked no further than her own home for subject matter. This new series is called Homebound Still Lifes, and she uses Liquitex acrylic paint on four by six inch wood panels and says that the paintings, quote, capture my love of the interior spaces I've created that make my home a place of beauty and comfort to me. Beautiful. Keep doing your thing, Alex. And that's it for us. Thanks so much for stopping by. And you know, I think the best way to remain sane during this very strange time is to be creative and stay connected. So let's keep doing that. Have a great week. Hey, have some crachos. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> and look, I got I got some merch. A mug. Yeah, oh, I got more than one. <laughs> How many? 25,000. <000. laughs> These are going to sell like hotcakes. This is what my branding team recommended. Great. Crachos. <laughs> So good, mm. you forget to chew. I can't remember to chew right now. <laughs> Don't those look appetizing? Mmm. They actually are weirdly good. Well, there's cheese, and it's a good, it's like a Ritz cracker. Ritz cracker-ish kind of thing with cheese. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs>